I get really upset with my own community when they don't trust my instincts at all. Biden's doctor releases letter amid a report. A Parkinson's specialist visited the White House. This was a big deal yesterday. New York Times did some reporting on it. A Parkinson's specialist, like a neurologist with a specialty in Parkinson's, visited the White House eight times on eight different instances and actually had correspondence, actually had correspondence with Biden's personal physician. Uh, this obviously became a matter of, uh, you know, importance, especially uh, right now as uh, people are calling into question Biden's mental faculties. And Karine Jean-Pierre had a heated exchange yesterday in the press conference with Ed O'Keefe. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, this new letter that was released by Biden's doctor on his uh, potential for having Parkinson's. Begin, though, with a defiant President Biden pushing back very forcefully against pressure to drop out of this presidential race on live TV yesterday. He dared anyone in his party to challenge him for the nomination. And now he is winning some key support from members of Congress. Also this morning, the administration is clarifying why a neurologist made multiple visits to the White House. Nancy Cordes, of course, is following all of this. Nancy, good morning. There are so many questions today. Good to see you. Good morning, Gail. And now we have some answers. Late last night, the president's personal physician released this letter stating that a neurologist who has visited the White House repeatedly over the past year was not here to care for President Biden and has been treating patients from time to time in the White House medical unit for the past 12 years. The Biden camp making the case aggressively Monday that it is now time for the party to move on. President Biden made it through Monday without any new Democratic defections and with some key backing from his party's House leader. I support President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. And from... That was a weird one, too. He said, I support Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, and the Democratic ticket. I thought that was strange. Like, the way he positioned that, I thought was kind of odd. Because it's like, why don't you just say you support President Joe Biden uh, and him running, like him staying on the ticket. <laughs> I thought he said four. No, I, I know. I'm pretty sure he said and President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. Anyway, he's just, you know, he's just playing it safe. You know who's not playing it safe? AOC. I mean, I guess she technically is playing politics and is playing it safe <laughs> in terms of the uh, Hassan, you are coping. Wait, what? No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Make no mistake. I'm seeing the writing on the wall. I'm, I'm saying that the Democrats are probably going to and uh go with joe i i think that they're gonna go with joe because they're <laughs> stupid and cowardly and also have no backbone and uh can't even do something that is going to ultimately help them in the long run she's playing politics for her own personal ambitions that are benefiting the working class dude i love <sighs> God, this is so stupid guys what difference does it make in this circumstance like what what could she be doing uh, that would benefit the working class we're talking about electoral politics we're talking about the democratic party like no seriously in this moment she should be like what we should kill joe biden is that what she should be saying like uh, for we should do a proletarian revolution like what, what, what are we talking about here i think that her instinct to go above and beyond to defend joe biden instead of just saying i'm sitting this one out is bad okay not smart to do that it's not smart to go balls to the wall in the way that she did you can look at other progressive politicians a part of the progressive caucus and uh uh you know that are obviously anti-establishment democrat for the most part who have been phenomenally critical of biden's administration saying much lighter things about biden even though they do also they do also take a stance that is significantly more pro-biden than the top of the establishment institutionalist democrats you have to ask why why is nancy pelosi more concerned about taking Biden out than AOC. For AOC, it's win-win. Everybody knows she's going to be a galvanizing force for the youth vote. She is a progressive figurehead in the party. She is the progressive beacon in the Democratic Party. She is, in many respects, most of the time considered an outsider. The squad is always considered outsiders in general. Ultimately, her sitting this one out and allowing the actual establishment Democrats who have significantly more staying power significantly more momentum in changing course changing the trajectory of what the dnc does than aoc but she didn't sit it out she basically came out and was like oh i love biden he's the best he's the best on the ticket he's the best we got which i think is bad silly to go above and beyond as far as playing politics goes if biden stays on the ticket 
then she has more access to Biden in her own personal calculation. She has more access to Biden, not to like do a proletarian revolution, mind you. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. She has more access to Biden to get certain things, um, get better, like more, more access to the Democratic Party's leadership, better committee positions, better way to enact at least some parts of the legislative agenda, that kind of thing. But if Biden isn't the top of the ticket, as the uh, Democratic Party's uh, establishment figureheads are demanding he drop out as quietly as possible, as best as they possibly can, then it doesn't matter because she's still a progressive bulwark. So it don't, they're going to, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, you defended Biden. So we're not giving you shit. That's it. Like you need to, you need to understand you cannot rely on politicians. Like you cannot expect politicians to, especially progressive politicians in this moment, while the establishment politicians are the ones who are demanding that Biden step out. Why the fuck would progressive politicians put their name on the board? It makes no sense. There is no reason for Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and all these people who have been up Biden's ass non-stop to put their name out there as anti-Biden. There's just no reason for them to do so when Nancy Pelosi is the one doing it. The only thing you do in that situation is potentially get a bunch of people who are geared towards hating you anyway to go see. It's the woke socialists that want Biden out. Biden is the best guy we have. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why you guys don't see this. All of a sudden, you're just giving the Biden holdouts more ammunition to be like, see, the left is interested in destroying the party. We're going to lose because of the left and not because Joe Biden is old as shit. Because they're scared of young progressives splitting the vote and Trump winning. They're trying to do a French election. No. What? I'm not a branded writer, but honestly, I have a hard time seeing how we could have a better option for defeating Trump. Every single person that is committed to voting for Joe Biden right now is already going to vote for whoever the f is the Democratic Party candidate. Not a single person is going to be like, I'm not voting if it's not Biden. And any other, any other candidate would bring additional votes on top of that. A lot of you either A, demand that like the Bernies and the AOCs of the world become... I don't know, vanguardists or something within the Democratic Party, or you also personally recognize that obviously politicians are not going to do shit for you. And at the end of the day, you have to literally operate completely outside of electoral politics if you want to get anything done. And even then, you're probably going to fail across the board. And yet you still want to chirp to do a I told you so moment. Okay. I don't know why you don't see this. Uh, and I, I don't know how to describe it in any other way. Jank was not thrilled with AOC about it. No, I, I'm telling you right now. I this is her message on this was bad. Okay, it was not good. She should not have gone above and beyond. She should have just been like, listen, I care about making sure that Republicans are not in office. I care about Project 2025. I care about you know uh, uplifting the American working class. I care about the American workers. I all of this other stuff. Uh, I it's not within my purview. I'm just going to keep advocating for those things i'm going to keep seeing who i can get my legislative agenda across with it doesn't matter instead of just being like i think biden is the best i love biden profile progressives like alexandria ocasio cortez the matter is closed he is not leaving this race he is in this race and i support him it came after biden himself turned up the heat on democratic doubters monday with a defiant appearance by phone on cable news if any of these guys yeah. don't think i should run against me Go ahead, announce for, announce for president. Challenge me in the convention. He also sent a two-page letter to congressional Democrats, insisting it's time for this debate over his health to end. Has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication for Parkinson's? No. White House officials initially declined to say Monday why Dr. Kevin Kennard, a neurologist and Parkinson's specialist, had visited the White House eight times in eight months. I am not sharing confirming names from here. It is a security reason. But late last night, the president's personal doctor revealed that while Dr. Kennard was the neurological specialist that examined Biden for each of his annual physicals, President Biden has not seen a neurologist outside of his annual physical, and that Kennard sees a variety of patients and problems when visiting the White House medical unit. It's not Parkinson's, it's Alzheimer's. Telling you, I don't think it's Parkinson's, man. But as I said yesterday, if you are wondering once again why the fucking squad is pro Biden, seemingly outwardly, it's because they do not want to fuck 
up the bag. They do not want to disturb the process that is taking place. You can say I'm wrong about this. This is my speculation. This is what I think is the smart political move for them, even though AOC's statements on it were not good. You got Hakeem Jeffries being like, I support President Biden and the Democratic ticket. Why is AOC not just saying that? Do you understand what I mean? Look at all of the other progressive members of the Democratic Party. Look at what they said. They all said they're with Biden. Do you guys think that they are more in tune with the establishment side, the establishment wing of the Democratic Party? They are to the right of like Mark Warner. Are they to the right of Nadler? Are they to the actual right ideologically of uh, all of these other Democratic Party establishment figureheads on this single issue? Yes. Okay, then you are insane. No, they're playing politics. They're politicians. You have to be schizophrenic to imagine a reality where people who are literally saying, are you still coping about AOC? This is not about AOC. I'm coping about the reality that so many in this community, every single time AOC comes into question, so many people in this community literally lose their minds, okay? You can't just be like, listen, dog, this is a bad statement. She has bad instincts in the sense that she is communicating something where she's going above and beyond unnecessarily. I do think she's wrong to go above and beyond, but I do personally speculate the reason why she's doing this, just like Ilhan Omar, and just like Premier Jayapal and all these other Democrats in the Progressive Caucus is because they don't want to make this a left issue. Hating on a schizophrenics again. Uh, you're making me a piece of shit according to you. Okay, I'm sorry for saying schizophrenics. I should have said hallucinations. People are hallucinating. Take a week off. You're not a bad person. You say that after you banned them? Yeah, I banned them because they're derailing and moving the conversation away in a deeply selfish way. Okay, yeah. You do that, I'll ban your bitch ass too. Do not arbitrarily ban schizophrenic person. What are you doing? Here you go. Actually, you know what? I'll perma you. Dude, you don't get to steer the conversation in whichever way, whichever direction you want to, okay? I don't think you understand how this works. Maybe some of you are confused by this process and how this situation works here, okay? Like, there's no world in which you go into a stadium and, I don't know, they're like playing soccer and you go down there and you're like, I don't like the way you're playing soccer. Stop it right now. There's 23,000 other people watching, but you need to stop the way you're playing soccer. Like, it doesn't work that way. You get ejected. I'm not going to accommodate for all of the narcissistic tendencies of every single chatter, no matter how much you agree with that chatter. Okay. This is not a democratic process. This is as close to a democratic process as possible, but that doesn't mean you can get away with whatever the you want to do. But you think they'll not get massive backlash when Joe gets cooked? No. Look. I said this yesterday and I will repeat it. When I say Joe Biden needs to drop out, he's old and demented. As I have said since 2019, when I said he shouldn't run, he's old and demented. Do you think the Democratic Party listens to my words? Or do you think it's significantly more powerful for that message to come from someone like Nancy Pelosi, who's also old and demented and an establishment Democrat? AOC saying Biden needs to drop out is not going to have the same staying power it might even have negative consequences in terms of polarizing people to push for biden okay do you get what i mean or maybe you don't i don't know if we finally beat medicare Several Senate Democrats said yesterday they want more time after last month's debate to see how things go for Biden. I think um, a lot of folks are raising some questions they need to get asked, but at the end of the day, we got to beat Donald Trump. Congressman Adam Smith is one of the nine House Democrats who say they've seen enough. We would be better off with another nominee, okay? I believe that in my heart, my soul, my brain. I'm 100% convinced of that. Biden's opponent, Donald Trump, has been keeping a low profile without any public appearances in 11 days. He resurfaced last night in an interview with Sean Hannity on Fox News. It looks to me like he may very well stay in. He's got an ego and he doesn't want to quit. Today, President Biden addresses foreign leaders at the NATO summit taking place here in Washington, D.C. And on Thursday, he's going to hold a rare... Dude, like Adam Smith, for those of you who are wondering, like, who's this guy, Adam Smith? Is that the godfather of, uh, you know, capitalist uh, uh, economics? No, man. That's a mother ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, okay? Like, there's a very... 
big difference when a guy like that is saying Biden has to step aside versus AOC. That's what I'm saying. Nadler is another person. Why are you so mad, Turkey Boy? I get really upset with my own community when they don't trust my instincts at all or when they when they have their own like personal vendetta and their own like personal opinions that just like go above and beyond where I see people acting irrationally, okay? And yes, sometimes I am wrong for the record. And I regularly will admit that. The problem is in this circumstance, even when I speculate, people, and I openly admit that I'm speculating, people won't just go, uh, okay, that's speculation. I disagree with it. They go, you're literally coping because you love AOC and you can never actually defy her. And I have, in my mind, a secret, like I'm, I'm assuming cynically that you have a secret cynical reason for your actual agenda. And it's like, dude, what the f I feel like I've earned the trust of people in this community to a certain degree. And it's very frustrating when I see people behave inside of my own community, when I see people behave like these psychos, okay? <clears throat> the Democrats who've called on Joe Biden to step down, a growing number of Democratic officials have publicly called for Biden to quit or reportedly done so in private. Lloyd Doggett was the first one last week. This probably doesn't feature like the actual statements that uh, people have made that you can infer are actually people uh, are, are actually people saying like Biden should definitely step aside, but in a gentler way. These are actual outward, like you have to step aside shit. I hope you guys understand why I get mad, by the way, when you guys uh, behave in an irrational, behave in a way that I consider to be irrational, when you don't trust my instincts at all. But beyond that, you also make secondary inferences about like my other secret motivations. Like I, when have I not been truthful to a fault? When over the course of the past 10 years of my professional career as a political commentator, have I not been truthful to a goddamn fault? Why would you suspect me of secretly having a different motivation in this circumstance? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's the most frustrating thing that I have to deal with. And it's additionally frustrating when it's coming from people who literally have for 46 months refused to see the top of the hour ad break because they've subscribed as a mic drop.